What's going on, Team Critical Bench Nation? It's Anthony Alion here. Today we have a very special guest, Nick Wright. And for those of you who don't know, he's uh, definitely got a great YouTube channel. We hand-selected him as being one of the top channels. Got a growing fan page, and uh, you also got a clothing line. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce him right now. Nick, how you doing? Thanks, Anthony. I'm great. What's going on, Critical Bench Nation? Awesome to be here. Well, we're uh, happy to have you uh so basically, Nick, we just want to go ahead and uh, tell our readers and viewers a little bit more about yourself, you know, how you got started and things like that. You know, what got you to this point? <clears throat> All right. Well, when I began lifting, officially lifting, freshman year of high school, I was 14 years old. I weighed 104 pounds at the end of the day. I had 11 and a half inch arms. I was petite. I was tiny. Um, funny thing is, I don't even know if I was aware of just how tiny I was. I kind of had little dog syndrome. I thought I was bigger than I really was. Which now I'm grateful for because it's what actually drove me to continue pursuing weightlifting even after everybody laughed. So one day, eventually, actually it was January 16, 2006, I uh, was watching a True Life episode of a bodybuilder training and taking down his measurements, and I decided right then that I wanted to also do the same. So I took all my measurements down, and then I began Google searching different bodybuilders. I didn't even know what the Mr. Olympia contest was. I had just heard of it before. Began Google searching... Uh, just bodybuilders in general, stumbled upon Ronnie Coleman, uh, the rest was history. I just became obsessed and infatuated. I had set a goal to compete as soon as possible. My father is the one who actually talked me into waiting a little bit because I was tiny and <laughs> had a long time to go. But um, soon after that, 15 years old, I competed in my very first competition in the teens, uh, placed second in it. Wow. Fast forward to now, I've done about seven competitions up to an international level. I've won regional size shows. I became a sponsored athlete at 18 years old. I got my first magazine cover at 19, becoming the first uh, natural teen on a cover. Uh, and I've been on PBS and Fox uh, quickly for just a couple of little documentary-type blog series. They're almost documentary style, but they were short. Um, and then how I began the channel was obviously I love bodybuilding. I love lifting. I love strength. And I love the actual sculpting of the physique at the same time. And when I began, there was absolutely nothing online for teenagers and even natural bodybuilders for that. So um, I found YouTube. I found out what a YouTube partner was, and I kind of became inspired to bring my knowledge, what I had learned, to the public in any way I could. Bring the people something that they could relate to. At that time, a teen competitor and a natural one at that. So we began – bringing out the videos and breaking down exercises, and I found out um, one thing I really liked doing was breaking down exercises verbally. Uh, I guess I guess I do it fairly well because people always compliment me on that aspect of my channel. Long well, story short, I brought the videos out, brought it mainstream as much as we could, and I'm still just trying to push the whole lifestyle mainstream now. Interesting, interesting. So you basically started fairly young and just kind of just kept that momentum, that go-getter, uh, alpha male personality, you just take it where you're at and I mean that's very impressive landing a magazine cover that's not something that very few people can say they've done you know yeah thank you I was excited about it yeah it's a great accomplishment uh, so as far as that goes you know you've talked about your channel what they like and things of that nature can you tell us what's probably the, the worst workout mistake when it comes to exercising that that people make and how to fix it oh man I'd have to say um Besides all the generic mistakes of, you know, training the same body the same body group over and over and over again, really I think the most common mistake is simply not knowing how to train, not understanding the biomechanics of a certain lift, of an exercise that you're doing. And when you're performing the exercise, not even realizing what muscle is supposed to be working or how to feel that muscle working. So you'll see somebody trying to squat and the movement itself is barely even activating the quads. It's, you're not getting deep enough. You're not – nothing about the actual movement is correct. Nothing about the actual movement is activating the muscles that's supposed to be moving. And it's simply from lack of understanding the mechanics of the movement and understanding exactly how to feel and tie in the muscle they're supposed to be working and targeting. So I would say overall the biggest mistake is um, simply not understanding how to properly exercise. Interesting, you know, and that's something like as far as full range of motion goes, uh, that's something that doesn't get discussed too much in the world of bodybuilding. So it's good that you're bringing that. You know, I've had a bodybuilding background as well, and the one thing they don't really 
it's more about the pump as opposed to full range of motion. So, right. you know, that's a great point. Um, you know, keeping on the topic of exercise, what do you uh, see people doing? Do you see people overtraining or, you know, when they start out? Um, not so much overtraining. In fact, I believe the term overtraining is overused, really. Uh, under recovery might be a better better way to put that. Um, and no, they're not the same thing. Some people may ask, isn't that the same thing as under recovery, just overtraining? But you can train and train and train a whole lot, and you can still make gains and recover from that. You just need to make sure you're getting the rest in between. I don't think I see too many people overtraining so much as I don't see them training efficiently enough, um, especially people who don't know what they're doing. They'll come in, they'll hit the bench press every single day, um, barely even doing the bench press correctly, actually. Most people don't even realize how intricate the simple bench press technique can be if you really break it down. And then they'll move right from bench press to curls, and they'll do a set of curls, and then they'll move from <laughs> curls to the lat pull-down machine. They just do the basic movements that they see and that are pretty self-explanatory or that are just the most popular in their gym class, and that's kind of where it ends, and they'll do that every single day. And at that point, it's not even so much a matter of overtraining, even though it's not good to train the same muscle every single day. It's also a simple matter of the fact that you're not really training efficiently at that point. Okay. Cool. Um, and the last thing I want to touch on training as far as that goes is what do you think about mobility? You know, again, going back to my background, mobility isn't something that people discuss. Is it helpful? Uh, you know, do you do any? Can you elaborate on that? I'm so glad you actually asked that because mobility is huge. And like you said, it's not a subject that has been really covered in past years. I feel like it's just now beginning to see some light. But mobility is everything. In the past, we're always taught that mobility equals flexibility, and obviously that will equal you stay limber, you stay healthy, which is true. That's true. Unfortunately and honestly, younger kids, teenagers, even my age at 22, we're young enough where we can bounce back pretty quickly. So we don't take the whole stretching and staying limber as seriously. When we hear it from everybody, oh, stretch, you're going to injure yourself, you're going to tear something, we're like, yeah, 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 I'll be fine, I'm fine. And that's obviously bad enough as it is. But one thing that should really be taught about mobility that I think more younger kids would actually grab onto and pay more attention to is how much of a strength increase it can bring to you. If you work on your mobility, say shoulders, for example, really, really work on your shoulder mobility, your rotator cuff, the tendons, the muscle itself, uh, the trap shoulder tie-in, the chest shoulder tie-in, overall mobility of shoulders, the more you increase that mobility and that flexibility in your shoulders, the more strength you're going to see. And I've personally noticed that myself um, upon incorporating more powerlifting into my routine, which I've been doing lately, I was able to skyrocket my bench press, which has always been my absolute weakest lift, by the way. It took me two years of training to even get 135 on the bar. Wow. Um, I started off maxing out 65 pounds and barely. <laughs> so it, by simply working on the mobility, I was able to push my bench press from like 275. I think I had gotten 315 before at, at this point, but it was like only on my best day ever would I get 315. Normally 275, I'd get it for a, a few sloppy reps and that'd be it. I began working on my, my mobility, really, really focusing on it, and I'll spend a good amount of time every push day now working on mobility, loosening up my shoulders. And since then, uh, my bench has skyrocketed and in no time flat, I'm up to pushing 345 clean, no spotter needed. Um, and that's without even really training for powerlifting either. And now that I'm beginning to focus on powerlifting, I'm, I'm excited to see how much higher I can get it. But the number one key to my strength gains on top of just training and eating has been increasing my mobility and working on shoulder mobility. And it goes for any muscle group. Excellent, excellent. So, okay, great. Uh, we've talked about that. Now, what about nutrition? You know, uh, bodybuilding has a lot to do with nutrition. Can you tell us, you know, what is needed? What's the mistake people make and how should they be eating? The mistake a lot of people make, I believe, is focusing on just getting protein in. Now, protein's essential. It breaks down into amino acids. It's what recovers your muscles, obviously. You need protein. And by definition, you need protein to actually survive. It's essential. But you only need so much protein at a time. I mean, the, the very rough, I don't like giving this as a guideline, but the rough guideline you can find is around um, one gram per pound of body weight uh, for an athlete um, You know, for protein, which is not a whole lot. People kind of forget the other aspects that go in there. Fats. You need a good amount of fats. Uh, a, a male doesn't want their fats to go below 20% of the diet if they can help it because it will start affecting uh, hormones in a negative way. Um, carbohydrates are essential for energy. Um, you need to get a calorie surplus if you want to put on size. 
you only need so much protein, you only need so much fat, where's the rest of those calories going to come from? It's going to come from your carbohydrates. So you need to make sure you're getting well-rounded everything, macronutrients. Don't just focus on protein. I know it's inserted in our heads at a young age, but everything, protein, fats, and then, of course, carbs are your fillers for the end of that. Um, the other mistake I see people making is beginners trying to overcomplicate nutrition too much. And if you get into competing, obviously, it's going to become very intricate. It comes down to a fine science. That's for sure. But if you're just beginning, I honestly don't recommend stressing too much. If you're just a kid who's in average shape trying to put on size and muscle, don't stress about exactly what types you're getting of this and that. Make sure you're getting in your protein intake. And then just focus on eating a lot because you're going to get your fats in easily. Everything has fats. If you can focus on getting better fats like avocados, obviously, your omega-3s, that's obviously a plus. When you're just beginning, just eat a lot. Focus on eating. Make sure you're getting all your macronutrients in there. Get your protein for sure. Then just eat your carbs and your fats and just eat a lot. Get your fiber in there. You don't need a whole lot of fiber throughout the day, so a little bit will go a long way. Um, and you'll be good. If you're not putting on size, you're not eating enough. Simple as that. As you get into it more on a more intricate level, then obviously you want to make sure you get each macronutrient down pat. You need to figure out how much protein you want, how much carbs you need, how much fats you need for your body to reach your goal. And then you, you, you nail those numbers down and you base your diet around that. Um, even the different types of foods, different types of carbs are over, overthought of a lot because even something like a sugar, if you're in a caloric maintenance or you're in a deficit, a sugar will simply be, um, digested and, and, and metabolized as, as a carbohydrate. It becomes glucose and then stored ultimately as glycogen. Um, carbohydrate is turning into a fat, de novo lipogenesis doesn't happen unless all your glycogen stores are maxed out. So basically, unless you're way overeating, that's not going to happen. So bottom line is just get your protein, fats, and carbs in. Get the calories in if you're starting off. Don't overthink it. Right, right. Uh, yeah, people, that's actually what I preach in my newsletter, even at Critical Bench, we discuss it. You know, you got to get those macros in. you got to get your macronutrients in. They're essential and they're needed for survival, like you said. They're essential. So that's a great point. Um, sticking to the topic of nutrition, what is your current nutrition looking like? You know, are you bulking up? Are you cutting? And tell us. Definitely bulking. I'm about 192 pounds right now at about five foot eight. Um, and again, coming from 104 pounds, that's that's a good size for me in my frame, being a naturally skinny light kid. Uh, lately, actually, the last couple of months, what I've been trying to do since I've been stepping away from the stage, I, I just want to break from competing and I want to go into some powerlifting a little bit more. I may or may not compete competitively. I'm not sure yet, but I'm just having some fun with my training right now. And what I found is uh, I actually went really, really old school for a while. I always tracked macros. Up until then, I was always tracking macros. Even if I was bulking, I'd get my caloric number set, 3,000 calories a day, whatever I was taking in. I'd have my calories set, um, and I'd follow that, and I'd adjust it as needed. But lately, the last couple of months, I've literally just been taking the approach I just preached about, the old school barbarian approach, the old C.T. Fletcher approach where you just get the calories in. Get the calories in. Yeah. I've been doing this for about six, seven, going on eight years now, seven or eight years now, where I I can eyeball my food. I know what I eat throughout the day. I don't have a huge variety of what I eat. And I, I can get a ballpark idea in my head of what I'm taking in. So I know like if I'm not taking enough protein, I know based on what I've eaten, oh, can we have another, another eight ounces of chicken or so? I'm definitely a little bit lower on protein than I should be. Well, in general, I'm just kind of eating. I'm, I'm just eating. I'm not overthinking it. I'm not even tracking anything right now. I don't even have my fitness pal in my phone, in my new <laughs> phone anymore. I'm just eating. I'm getting the calories in. I have a ballpark idea of what I'm getting in. I'm making sure I get my protein. My fats and my carbs are definitely up because I'm eating. So um, that's what I'm doing right now. And honestly, it's worked amazingly. Um, I think it was a little bit of a break mentally because I've been doing this for seven years. So it was a break mentally. Uh, and, man, my strength has shot up through the roof. My size is up. Um, you know, it feels good at five, eight, you know, to finally be filling out XLs now, which was, you know, I was always like smalls are big on me when I began. So little things like that. It's been working amazingly. I'm a little bit softer right now than I've ever been. Um, some of the comments on my channel will remind me of that all the time, but that's fine. I'm honestly, I planned for that a little bit. I didn't mind getting a little bit fluffy. I'm not letting it go too crazy. I'm about to tie it up right now and, uh, you know, clean it up, chisel it up just a little bit. But, um, yeah, I gave myself a chance to basically just. You know, old school barbarian, <laughs> eat a lot, lift a lot, and the gains are amazing. So Cool, cool. And, uh, you know, as far as that goes, you know, you've talked about what you're doing. What can you tell us about supplements? I mean, that is probably the most talked about topic. Mm -hmm. Should I be taking supplements, weight gainers? I mean, you've got nitric oxide, creatine, pro 
what would you, if you'd categorize them to the things that are essential, what right. would you say they are? Yeah, so first off, to anybody who's just looking to get into this working out business, period, forget supplements. First things first, I want to get that, because I want that to be, that should be imprinted in everyone's head first and foremost. Forget about supplements. And I'm talking about the kids, because I've worked in different in different uh, supplement stores before for corporations. I've done sales online. I've been in every industry. Um, and I can't tell you how many kids I see come into the store and never lifted a weight a day in their life, it looks like. Um, don't even know what a macronutrient is. They don't even understand how more, they don't, understand, they don't know what caloric surplus is. They don't even know how to perform most exercises. That are not on a training split, nothing. And yet they're coming in and asking which supplement will get me jacked. Supplements are going to do next to nothing for you. There's very few supplements that are actually efficient. I'll get into those in a second. Um, most supplements will do nothing for you. And no supplement that's over the counter, that's legal and over the counter, will, will actually help you gain muscle. It, no supplement will do that. So get supplements out of your head. It's eating. Eat big, lift big. That's what you need to get down. Once you have that in your head, you can use supplements as a way of putting icing on the cake, if you will. For example, whey protein. And when I say whey protein, I mean any of those genres. Whey protein, it can be a mass gainer. It can be a casein. But anything that's a legitimate protein just in powder form, a meal in powder form, those are good because they're a meal in powder form. So you're trying to get calories in. You don't have a huge appetite. It's hard for you. You may invest in a mass builder, and bam, that's 1,000 calories just by drinking a shake. Yeah. That's going to help you out. That's perfect. You have to rush in the morning. You don't have time to make breakfast. Two scoops of whey protein, 50 grams of protein right there. That's, that's a meal that you can just drink really fast. So that's perfect. Protein powders in any form are never, ever a bad idea. Those are great because they are just meals in powder form. Whey is a dairy protein. It's a real source of food. After that, the only – that's about all you would really need to rely on, I'd say, because it's like a food. If you want to get into the more, um, the more sports area and supplements – Creatine is about the one and only most proven supplement to work. In creatine, all you need is five grams a day. It's a very basic monohydrate, micronized monohydrate. Don't ever let these supplement companies gimmick you with these fancy names. Don't worry about it. It's basic monohydrate, nine dollars online. Take five grams a day. You don't need to do a loading phase. You don't need to cycle on and off it. Five grams a day keeps your cell saturated. Creatine simply helps muscle ATP. When you're working out for a long time. Fat is what gives you the energy. When you're working out for a moderate time, like a weightlifting session, carbohydrates give you that energy. When you're doing quick explosive movements, that's the creatine. You naturally produce creatine. So keeping the cell saturated five grams a day, creatine phosphate levels are up, you're good to go. Um, besides that, the only, pre the only other supplement I use would be a pre-workout, which you may or may not use. If you don't use them now and you don't need them, honestly, I recommend not getting into them. Um, if you do begin using them, you probably found that you kind of rely on them because it's like coffee for your workout. Pre-workouts are essentially just uh, will be a, a mix of stimulants, caffeine. They might use your himbean, just a couple of uh, safe natural stimulants for you. They'll have things like beta alanine, which is a, a precursor, and it'll it'll essentially, along with the creatine, it'll essentially help to prolong your fatigue. So you, if you have beta alanine, that's what gives you that tingly feeling, and that's going to make it so you're not fatigued as easily. Uh, the, other, the only other one that I'd say is worth uh, mixing in there would be like citrulline mali, which is a good vasodilator. That's your NO2, your nitric oxide. Um, expands the blood vessels, gets more blood flow to your muscles. More blood flow means more oxygen. You get more stamina, basically. More of a pump. Right. So th that would be it. All your whey protein powders in any form, mass gainers, etc. Creatine, five grams a day, real simple and cheap. And then if you wanted to, a pre-workout, just consistent with the basics, you know, your stimulants for energy, your beta alanine, your citrulline malic, etc. Absolutely, that's a great point. You know, there's so many supplements, this latest and greatest. You pick up a magazine, it sounds promising, but you know, it's not really needed. Get the foundation first before you even think about that stuff. So right. to sum it up, basically, I put it, I categorize it in your head like this. If it's not giving you food or if it's not giving you energy for something, for a workout, like direct energy for a workout, don't take it. Don't even bother with it. Thermogenics, you may see that the pills you take, they give you some energy and they burn fat. If you want to take those for the sake of energy and curbing your appetite, some of them are all right for that, um, but they're certainly not going to burn the fat off of you. 
So right. don't fall into that either. <laughs> Great. Uh, I guess one of the last questions I want to ask is, you know, if someone wanted to follow in your footsteps, you know, just like you were a teen at one age, someone that's, you know, a teen now or just anyone out there in general that, you know, wants to get started in bodybuilding, competing, uh, what's one piece of advice you give them, like a, a mindset, motivational, you know, how you stay motivated and how they could use that tip right today to help them? Quite simply, you have to want it. You have to want it. And if you're not in that mind state, then you better figure out ways to make yourself want it. And um, it may not be the most favorite answer you're going to hear, but it's the most honest answer. Honestly, like I said in the beginning of this interview, when I was 104 pounds, I didn't believe I was. I thought I looked better than I really was. I had this driven, tunnel vision, almost narcissistic mind state that I was better than I was. Nowadays, it's opposite. Now that I've actually gained some size and strength, I'm like... I don't think I looked that good. <laughs> but uh, back then when I started, I, I thought I was way ahead. And I simply wanted it. I Googled those bodybuilders. I realized what I wanted to do when I was dead set on competing. And I, I tell you, I, at one point, I was always one of those kids that fit in socially at my school. I was friends with everybody. But at the same time, there was one point where I was literally almost bullied in school. I couldn't even go to a party and say one comment without somebody turning into a joke making fun of me uh, for bodybuilding in some way. I remember saying one time at a party, oh, I was – up late last night, somebody cut me off. What were you doing? Finger curls? And everybody started laughing. It was like that. It was it was crazy. Fast forward now, I have those same kids going onto my fan page and actually asking questions pertaining to working out. Um, so I pursued it, kept the friends I needed to keep, and uh, I couldn't be happier right now. I'm doing my thing, literally just because I wanted it. So don't focus on other people at all. You need to completely tune other people out. People will only ever give you their opinions, and most of the time it's going to be knocking you down. It'll be saying, you're not cut out for it, you're not good enough for it, you look like crap. You shouldn't do it, it's not practical, the list goes on and on and on. Don't listen to other people. Also, don't listen to other people even when they're trying to give you positive advice. You should bulk for this long and then jump on this show, or you shouldn't do a show yet, you should wait here. No, forget that. Get into your own head and stay there. Do what you want to do. If you want to train, train. If you want to bodybuild, bodybuild. If you want to do a show, do a show whenever the heck you want to do a show. And you're going to have the most fun that way. And you'll find through having fun, you'll end up finding your success in bodybuilding. Cool, That's cool. Nice. Absolutely. That was great, Nick. Uh, and, you know, we're going to be having a link to your YouTube channel, your Facebook. Uh, you want to tell them real quick how they can get there? Uh, Definitely. Uh, YouTube is youtube.com slash Nick Wright. It's really easy. And another way to find me, guys, I have videos breaking down every exercise. And like I said, I, I like, I don't just tell you how to do an exercise. I like breaking down the actual little details into it and giving you ways to remember it. Uh, for example, like dumbbell rows. I tell you to roll the dumbbell up to your back, uh, up to your belt buckle when you're starting a chainsaw, not up and down to your chest. If you're rowing, try to elbow somebody who's hugging your waist off. Little tips like that. It all makes sense when you see the video, I promise you. I try to break it in ways you'll understand it and get it stuck in your head and really, really learn it. So if you ever have a question about a certain exercise, instead of looking through my entire channel, just simply YouTube search Nick Wright Dumbbell Rows or Nick Wright Squats. Nick Wright with whatever keyword you're interested in learning about, and I guarantee you'll find it on YouTube. My Facebook page is the page to be on. That's where I'm at. Very interactive. It's simply Nick Wright Bodybuilding on Facebook. All right. Perfect. Well, we're going to have links right above this on the site, and uh, Nick wanted to thank you. We here at Critical Bench really appreciate it. It was very informative, and I'm sure our readers and viewers are going to find this informative. So thank you so much for being on this, Nick. Thanks, Anthony. I appreciate it. And one more thing is the new website is created, and it will be up soon. It's nwblifestyle.com. So check that out and see what that's all about. Excellent. Yeah, check it out. And he's also got a clothing line. So guys, want to fan of Nick's, make sure and grab one of his shirts. You know, he's got a lot of great, great T-shirts out there and clothing. So check that out as well, everyone. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Critical Bench. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good one.